Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to open the exhibition formally. If anybody will, at the back would like to join us, this exhibition, Nil Skips, is uh, a joint effort really with uh, Touchstones in Rochdale. The exhibition previously was in Rochdale and it's hopefully going on to Stockport and then Bolton Art Gallery. Uh, and it's funded by the Heritage Lottery Fund. Um, and without further ado, over to Edmund Gartside. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great pleasure to open this exhibition. I've been involved in the textile industry all my working life, but my family's been involved for well over a hundred years. And this exhibition really does bring back memories. To see all these wonderful historical landscape scenes of, of the cotton industry in Lancashire. It tells the history of Oldham particularly, and it brings back so many memories. Uh, as I've said, I worked in the cotton industry all my working life, so cotton is in my blood. Now Oldham, as you, I'm sure you all know, was the centre of the cotton industry for many, many years certainly in the UK and even on a world basis. Cotton has dominated the growth and development of Oldham. When cotton was king, Oldham was king. And when cotton declined, Oldham declined and had to find a new role for itself. The first spinning mill in Lancashire was in fact built in Oldham and District in 1764. It was the Thorpe Mill in Royton. That was the first steam-powered mill in Lancashire. And then, towards the end of the 19th century, the speed with which mills were built was tremendous. And Eldon built probably more than any other town in Lancashire. At the start of the 20th century, Eldon had more spindles than any other town in the world, and in fact any other country in the world other than the United States. It had over 600 spinning mills, many of them built to get together in clusters with their accompanying houses for the work people. Mill chimneys, as you'll see from these paintings, they dominated the Oldham Sea. It was said in those days that Britain's bread hung by Lancashire's thread, and most of that thread was spun in Oldham. Now, I'm just going to tell you a bit about my grandfather and the family involvement in the industry. There isn't time to tell you about the whole history, but his story really reflects the development of the industry at that time. He was a self-made man who built up a cotton empire of 14 mills through seven different companies. And you need to understand that in those days, people didn't just build up one company, they did it through a group of companies. So he was actually a director of seven different companies and built mills from these different companies. He wasn't the biggest um, textile man by any means. There was a gentleman by the name of John Bunting who had 20 mills. He started off as a blacksmith and was a share broker, but he had 20 mills. He lived in a, a terraced house on Union Street and was one of the wealthiest men in, in, in Lancashire at that time. But my grandfather was born in 1857. He started work as a check boy for the co-op in a shop on Middleton Road, Royton, where he worked a 69-hour week from eight in the morning till 10 at night. But he did get Tuesday afternoons off. He was only there a couple of years when he went as warehouse boy and became an office boy at the Belgium mill in Reuton. That mill, incidentally, was bombed during the war, so no longer exists. At the age of 16, he went as a clerk to the Reuton Spinning Company which was a smallish mill by today's standards in the centre of Brighton. 
There, it is reputed, he twice asked the board for a salary increase, and I've seen the board resolutions. They both say that the request of Mr. T. E. Gartside for a salary increase be rejected. So he left Droit the Spinning Company and he went to Meller and Jackson, a local firm of solicitors, where he stayed for a number of years. But whilst he was at Meller and Jackson, he obviously started to take an interest in cotton because um, on the record he was the auditor of Park and Sandy Mill in 1885 when he was still working for these solicitors. But he really joined the cotton industry in 1889 when he went back to Reuton Spinning Company as the company secretary. And he says that Reuton Spinning Company, that's where I made all my mistakes, but I never made any after I left Reuton Spinning Company. He went as a director of Shiloh, which was his main company in Reuton, and where he stayed for the rest of his life in 1891. But before that, he was a director of the Holly Mill, which just shows how they got involved in several different groups of company in those days. He was, Shiloh wasn't doing so well in the 1890s, and um, so they asked him to become manager and secretary. So he left Droyton Spinning Company in 1894 and became general manager of Shiloh. Now, in those days, if you were managing a mill, you were not allowed to be on the board. So he had to resign from the board, but he successfully turned Shiloh around in the 1890s, and they put him back on the board again in 1904 as managing director. And he became chairman in 1907. And during this period, while he was at Shiloh, he got involved in these other six companies in Royton and became a director. Uh, one of his acquisitions was the Highfield Mill in Royton, which he bought in 19, 1904. It was bought at an auction at the King's Arms in Yorkshire Street in Oldham for the priceless sum of £7,725. This was the time of the mill building fever between 1900 and 1914. And in these groups of mills, he built six new mills. The last two were the Park and the Park and Sandy Mills. And they were, the architect for these two mills was Turners, who were well-known Oldham architects at the time. And he used the same plans for both of these mills. One was a right-hand mill and the other was a left-hand mill. He didn't intend to, buy, to, to build two mills at that time, but he said, he said to Platts, the machinery people, if I give you two mills, will you give me a 10% discount? <laughs> and they said no. So he went to Ace and Easy's, who were the other machinery people in Oldham. And Ace Elise gave, gave the 10% discount. So two mills went up. The last mill that he built was the Elk Mill in 1927, which was always described as Tommy's Folly. Everybody thought he was mad building a mill at the height of the Depression, but it went up. It was the last mill spinning mill in Lancashire in fact, I think it was the last mill to be built in, Man in Lancashire. And it was one of our most successful mills. <laughs>